Hey guys, this is Savannah from earthandwater.co. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's officially winter, which means hibernation season. I'm having a really hard time getting out of bed. So I just wanted you to know that if you are also in hibernation mode, it is a-okay. And spring will be back soon. So I want to talk today about meditation. Because there's not many other things that are as important as this. I actually, I don't know. We're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and claim it. There is nothing more important than meditation. Everything starts in the mind. Everything starts in the mind with the mindset and the convincing of yourself that you can do the things that you want. And most of us do not start with this mindset. Uh, I mean, none of us start with this mindset, right? Because we're all a programming result of our situation circumstances of growing up. But once we hit a conscious place in our life where we're actually trying to con like consciously, intentionally, purposefully do build whatever it is that we want, most of us are starting from a point that is not that, obviously. If it were, we would already have the things that we want, right? Because everything, everything, everything leads us back to the mind, the mindset, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions. It is all ground level, base one, level zero starting point. So through the first chunk of life, we are getting programmed and more or less, they've, they've done studies and they saw that children are basically in a state of hypnotize hypnotization hypnotized they're they're basically in this state of mind where they're soaking up all of the information around them all the time and we know that you know kids are doing that and at our job as the people who are interacting with the children as their caretakers to program them efficiently uh we don't always do that great of a job because honestly we're working with some crappy programs most of us anyway so you know, the human race is young and in our thinking and society and everything's moving so much faster and we're evolving so much faster and it's hard to keep up and, you know, all of the things at a risk of sounding like ultimate chaos over here that life has thrown at us that has landed us where we are now. Welcome. Now we are conscious of it. We are aware that these programmings exist, that we are operating under the programs, that some of them may not be super helpful, that some of them may not even be noticeable to us. We're operating, we're all operating under programs that we didn't even know we had. And, you know, what's done is done, but we can now make the conscious choice and decision to move forward with better programs because our minds are programmable it's that simple it really is it well i mean it's not very simple but at the same time it is simple uh, we have programs and once we're aware of these programs we can begin working to rewire our brains and work with new programs and so that we can pass on better programs to our children so that together we can build a better society for us all whoa heavy lucky us right ignorance is bliss but, you know, we're lucky enough to be aware that we have these programs and that we can change them and rewire them and whatever. Because all we have to do is choose what we want our life to be and look like and all of that and decide that we're going to live our life moving forward here in a direction to get those things. And meditation is how you do that. Now let's start with exactly what meditation is, because if you're not very familiar with it, which most of us aren't, it can be really confusing. If you Google what is meditation, you get the act of meditating. Wow, Google. Wow. How unhelpful is that? So it took me years and years to actually figure out what meditation actually was because I was reading, I was reading, I was researching, I was listening to the guided meditations, I was... Uh, reading the books, I uh, went and got certified as a meditation teacher because all of the big name successful everybody's out there contribute meditation to their success. So they're like, hands down, that's one of the most important things I do. And I was like, well, crap, it's one of the most important things you do to be successful. I guess I need to figure this shit out, right? 
But it was so confusing to me when I was starting out because I was like, okay, I'm following, I'm doing what you say, I am relaxing, and but, but what is the point? I don't understand. What's the point? I need to know like the end game so that I can make my way there because the guided meditations and all are great for beginners, but ultimately you're following somebody else's path to rewiring and you know maybe their rewiring isn't exactly what type of rewiring that i want because we're all we're all we're all living in our own world everybody's world is different everybody's perception of the world is different and we get to choose and pick and decide how we want to perceive the world through these beliefs and whatever so the meditation helps us bring our version of a great reality into fruitation so it really needs to be super personalized you know so i mean yeah i have guided meditations out there because that's what y'all wanted but i really feel like when i tell people who want to start meditating and my students and whatnot they come through and i'm like look all you have to do is go sit on the back porch or somewhere in nature preferably but you can also wherever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter wherever you feel safe and comfortable is the perfect spot get comfortable uh, you don't have to worry about posture or form this early on until that's that's more advanced stuff where that's like level five stuff we got to start at level one and level one is just sitting around and thinking and sitting around and noticing and tuning in to your thoughts and tuning in to your uh, senses, all eight of them. Yes, I said eight, not five senses, eight senses. And I'm just throwing a number out there. It's definitely more than five, but you've got to figure out how many you got. I can't do that for you. I can't tell you what you're feeling. I can't tell you what you're noticing. I can't tell you the subtle energies that are around you and what you should be tuning into. You have to figure that out yourself. But at the same time, that's also not level one. Not level one, okay? So back up. We're just going to sit and think about who we are, how we are, and why. Why are we like that? Why do we do those things? Why do we react that way when that comes up? Why do I do this every morning? Why Why am I doing that thing that I hate? Like, I, I dread doing that. Why am I still doing that? Exactly why. Exactly why. Why did such and such react the way they did in third grade when this happened? Why am I still sitting around and thinking about the situation that happened 25 years ago? Is that thing that happened 15 years ago that's affecting me today? Does anybody else on the planet even remember that that happened? Can I let go of that too? Because like, I mean, that doesn't seem helpful. It's not helpful. Because when you're doing this and you're going through all of your thoughts and your beliefs and the rules that you're living your life by, all that matters is, is it helpful or not? And if it's not helpful, you can choose to let it go. Is it going to be that easy? No, of course not. It never is. Nothing's ever that easy. The work is the, you know, the work. When you're starting out with meditation, I don't want you to go into it thinking it should be one way or another or anything. I don't want any thoughts about how it's going to be or should be. Practice keeping an open mind and just go into it, do it, and see what comes up. Let the experience formulate the beliefs in and of itself. Start with the location. Start with the getting comfortable. And then just breathe. Exist. Let whatever shows up, show up. You're creating space to exist. And just be and breathe and see what happens. Nothing's going to happen. Thoughts are going to pop up. And you're going to notice them. Try not to react to them. Just notice them, create space around them, be like, oh, hey, there's a thought. But right now, right now I'm just existing. And then you come back to your breathing and you're relaxing because that's all we're doing is breathing and relaxing and creating space to just exist in the world without expectations. Tell all those thoughts that you'll address them later when you're addressing them. But right now, in this moment, and this all comes back to mindfulness. This is what mindfulness is, focusing on one thing at a time, being one thing at a time, doing one thing at a time. Right now, you're meditating. What is meditating? Basically, resting, uh, breathing, existing, letting 
the ground support you and hold you up, giving your muscles a break, consciously relaxing and releasing them so that they can let go. Because our body connects to our mind and our mind connects to our body. And sometimes it's harder to quiet the mind than it is the body. We can tell the body, you know, be still, stop twitching, stop moving. Relax this muscle. Relax that muscle. And when we start getting our body to relax and let go and just chill and create space and slow down, our mind starts to follow suit as well. And man, does it feel better when your mind starts to chill the fuck out. Then we're going to find less stress, less anxiety, less anger, less whatever. We're going to stop reacting when we create the space we're going to start stop reacting and begin consciously choosing how we want to react to the situation in front of us. And this is what meditation is. It's creating space around the thoughts, the things, the all of the obligations, the to-do list, the whatever, the whatever you got, the trauma, the whatever. It's creating space around that so that you can learn how to slow down so that you can learn how to consciously choose how to move forward. Because the untrained mind is reactive, right? Something happens, it pisses you off, you snap, you might throw something. I don't know how you manage your, how, you know, some people have some crazy anger issues. I used to be one of them, honestly. I used to be a very angry person. But now I've cultivated the patience because I have cultivated the skill of meditating and creating space around my thoughts and actions and words so that instead of when this happens and I snap automatically as a response, the thing happens and then I'm able to pause and analyze it and then decide how I want to move forward, which is oftentimes much healthier than just reacting, right? So it's a work in progress. Do know that these changes aren't going to happen super quick because nothing in life happens super quick. You know, do you watch a flower bloom? No, you can't see that shit, but you walk out there one day and it's bloomed, hasn't it? Why? Because it's constantly working towards its goal of blooming. So be patient with yourself, my love. And let me tell you, when you're getting started, just practice creating space. That's it. Create space. Create space around everything. Before you get out of bed in the morning, sit there. Before you grab your phone, sit there. Take some deep breaths. Uh, think of a couple of things that you're thankful for. Relax the muscles. Loosen up. Stretch if you want. Just, what, just create space so that you're not jumping from one thing to the next constantly. You have one minute. You have 60 seconds. 60 seconds to create space around everything. Okay, you create 60 seconds space and then you get up and then you get ready and then you create 60 seconds of space before you do the next thing and then you create 60 seconds of space before you fix your breakfast and I don't, whatever, 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 create space constantly. We move too fast. We move too fast and we don't have time to analyze and react the way that we need to positively all of the time. Will it get easier? Yes. Will you be able to react faster? Yes, but it will take time and it takes it, it a while. It takes a while. You can't you can't undo 30 years worth of bad programming in, you know, 30 days. But you can make a dent in it. You can start. You can you're going to be however old you're going to be in 5 years anyway. You might as well start working on a better you, right? The time's going to come to pass regardless. And this, this creating space around everything that you do and just taking the time to breathe a little bit more, it's invaluable and it takes zero effort and it takes zero skills and it takes zero supplies or anything. You can do it anywhere as long as you have your lungs and your head and lucky us, we carry those around with us everywhere, don't we? So that's it. If you're wanting to get started in meditation, all you have to do is create space around everything. Tune into your breathing, tune into your senses, notice the textures, the colors, the smell, all of the different whatever's in the things that seem like this or like that. 
Notice the beliefs that you hold about the things that you're experiencing. See if they trace to other things in your life that are one way or another because you have been programmed to do that, you know? Knowing that these programs are there is how we fix them, ready them, heal them, rework them, all of the things. So yeah, you work on that. I'll work on some other things and then you let me know if you have any questions. Make sure you're in our Facebook group so that you can easily get in contact with not only me but everybody else in there that, you know, likes stuff like this. And as you ask questions or find things that you need to know about, I am happy to help. But just breathe through it and relax your shoulders, okay? Because you got this and you are not alone. I know sometimes it feels like you're alone, but you are not alone. I am right here and I am here for you. So let me know how I can help you and you have a wonderful existence. Namaste.